Hello, and welcome to this edition of Psychic Medium, Tony G. I'm so excited to be here today with my extremely special guest, Nancy, who is going to ask some very amazing questions. I can't wait to get started. Hi, Nancy. Hey, How are Tony. you today? Thanks for having me. Absolutely my pleasure. It's going to be so much fun. It is. I can't <laughs> wait no. to get no. started. So, Nancy, you have worked on questions that are... Mm -hmm. Not the average question, I want to say. Well, we've talked about it, and yeah, you know, when you start thinking bit about it, and then you go a little bit deeper in the answer, and that's why it's so much fun. Yeah. So I was just thinking, you know, we come into this life from love, right? And we go out of it into back into love. Why isn't there more love here then? Okay. Does that is, make sense? It does. This is my favorite question I think I've ever been asked, ever. Really? So we do come from love, and we return to love, and most people don't realize at our essence, we are love. So the physical body brings a, an element of fear sometimes into play, but the essence of who we are, at our core, we are love. But we are not taught that we are love. We're taught love is something we receive, love is something we give, and love can be used as a weapon. Like, I'm going to withhold my love if you don't do, say, act in the way I want you to, which goes against every ounce of our natural being. What starts at, like, different religions? There's a number of different things. Okay, so, and, and that's, that's part A of what can separate us from love. Okay. Part B is we come in and we come here to, uh, and this is really, this is such an important part of it. We come here to be love in action. So, and we come here to learn Mm -hmm. So we get grouped and we pick and we plan prior to coming in. And a lot of people would say, I would have never planned or picked this life. But we pick a life where we go through these lessons that help us evolve. But instead of everybody looking at it as lessons and a learning process, they look at it as though it is, I made a mistake I am bad, and we're taught that even as children, mm -hmm. inadvertently beyond our parents, you know, no fault of theirs because they're just doing the best they can to. The first time we do something, they're, they're afraid, so they react to us, and, and we get this, oh, I've been bad. I'm, I'm being punished. I know they were taught it, though, too, by their parents, so Absolutely. it's just a... Absolutely, Continuous. It, it is a it's it's something that has been going on for 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 not only generations but hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. Now, if we go to other cultures, and, and we're going to get to the religion thing in a moment, but if we go to other cultures, let's say Eastern, uh, like it, it, in India, they have a whole different set where they come in and they know there's mo most. I'm not going to speak for everybody in India. Um, they know that there's a dharma or a purpose for their soul. They understand some of this um, way of being, of being love and seeking from the soul rather than the flesh or the monetary end of things. And the beautiful thing is, and I know this, this, is, this answer is going all the way around and coming back too, I hope, that if we follow our soul, our purpose, our dharma, and we stay in that love that we are, mm -hmm. if we behave from what we are, all of the rest of that stuff, we have a, glow, a natural glow. We're at a frequency where money and, and the, the abundance comes flowing into us, and we don't have to seek it. We're just seeking who and what we are, and everything falls into alignment from that. Now, on another note, religion. Religion teaches us there's a hierarchy, mm -hmm. and 
there's right and wrong, damnation, heaven and hell, and how can anybody ever think they're good enough to go back home, to go back to the love from, what they, from which they came? If there are all these rules that just in today's world, we can't even possibly, you know, keep all these uh, from growing up. We're taught we're bad, we're naughty, um, instead of teaching, okay, this was a lesson that you've learned, and now you've learned this lesson, we're going to move on to the next lesson. Just like education, we're taught you're so bad, and that's it. Doesn't the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, doesn't he in certain times, um, when we're learning a lesson, if we didn't learn it, doesn't he like turn it up? So we get it. Okay, I mean, I look so, at things that's happened in my life and I didn't get it the first time, but it got stronger maybe a year later or whatever. It yes. just kind of turns it up so you get it. Okay, so here's the beautiful thing. Yes and no. Okay. Yes and no. There is only one lesson to learn, believe it or not. There's only one lesson we are here learning. We think it's all these different lessons on all these. I need to learn lessons about money. I need to learn lessons about career. Exactly. I need to learn lessons about relationships. Er, wrong. There's only one lesson to learn. And this lesson, and I hope I'll, I'll explain it a little. Mm -hmm. Well, because I talk, that's what I do. So I'll do that. Um, the lesson is you are love. And to be that love, to have that love for yourself and to have that love and to be that love, to behave in that way of love. Now, if you love yourself, if you, and, and loving yourself isn't something you do, it's something you are that resonates out from you, then everything else falls into place. Everything else falls where it is supposed to be. So for example, if I love myself, I will not get in a relationship with someone who is anything but loving to me. If I am reprimanded and I am love, I understand that that is that person's mm -hmm. uh, issue. As an adult, it's that person's issues. And as a child, if I'm taught love and I'm taught with love, when I'm reprimanded, I understand, okay, this happened, it's okay, we're moving on, this is never going to be brought up again. But that is not always the way it happens because as parents, we try to teach in a way that you only learn the lesson once and then you know this forever and that never happens with children. So if we were taught and we knew we are love, then the rest of it would absolutely positively fall into place. And the lesson is not only knowing we are love, but maintaining and being that love throughout our life. But then fear comes in because we are afraid if I'm love, if I behave as love, if I love this person and they don't love me back. And that all comes from ego or the flesh or the fear that we have that we can actually be harmed and we cannot be harmed. But is a lot of it has to do with the way we're raised too? Yes, of course. If you're not... You know, so we're, you know, seriously, when you think about it, we're all scarred. Right. Yeah, we come in flawed. We, we, the moment we come in and we take that first breath and we, depend, we become dependent on that breath, from that moment on, there is a fear the breath won't be there. And then there is another fear that this won't be there. And then there is another fear, oh, I have, I have a, a cut, or I have this, or I have that. And all of these fears can then pile up, and we, be, we, we then are more distant from our understanding of our true essence. So that's what our lesson is, being human. Like the first question I just asked, you know, why, since there's come in with love, go out with love, and why isn't there more love? How can there be then? Because, and you just nailed it on the head. You said being human. We're not, we've been taught we're human. We've been taught we're physical. We've been taught we are this exterior 
appearance, and we've more importantly been taught that that's really all that matters, mm -hmm. is how we look, how we present mm -hmm. ourselves, Absolutely. what we do, right? How much we make. How much we make, what do we where have? we live. Yeah, exactly. How is our home furnished? What clothes are we wearing, by the way? Loving this ruffle top. Anyway. Looks good, <laughs> Thank you. Right there, <laughs> right? Right there. So we are not equally or at all taught you are also and more completely spirit that will live on for infinity that goes back to the whole to the totality from which you came most of us we are whole right right and most of us never learn that until we go seeking it mm -hmm. in what our 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 Western culture calls spirituality. Um, we don't learn that until much later in life. Instead of learning in the beginning of life, oh, wow. yes, you have a physical being, but you also have this essence, and you, this is what you truly are. This is who you will remain. Wouldn't that be amazing, though, if we did learn that early in life? Yeah. I mean, this planet would be just amazing. I mean, right. oh it my would, gosh. It would, that's what they're saying when they say heaven on earth. That's what it would be. If we all knew we were love, that our essence is love, that love is not something you give or take. It's not something it that is. you use as a tool. It's not something that is a gift. Mm -hmm. It's it's your totality of who you are. And if we were taught that and we could live from that without fear, that is literally Amazing. the definition of what we envision heaven to be, and that is what would be heaven on earth. No fear. No, Amazing. no competitive mm. no attitudes, no, no worry, no... And I cannot stress, there's only two things in this world. Mm -hmm. There is faith, love, and fear. And fear is an illusion. We fear things that have not yet come into reality. Now, having said that, let me put my finger up and exclamation this point. Um, having said that, <laughs> when you think about any fear you have, mm -hmm. it is not something that has yet happened. Mm -hmm. It's an illusion of what could happen. It's a foreseen outcome. It's exactly it is what not it is. reality. So if we would get rid of the fear of what could happen, we would be in faith or love. And that's what we would be with. And that we would, just need to trust. Right. And and on that note, even children have trouble trusting today. Oh, you know yeah. what? I have yeah. a friend. She has, I mean, these are two people. And their kid's like 16. And a couple of their friends have tried to commit suicide. They're doing drugs. There's just so much going on in their life. They can't handle it. What's yeah. that about? I mean, they're like young. Yeah, it's... Is it the way they're raised? Uh, obviously. I mean, obviously it is. Okay, so we have to take into account everybody comes in with a life program. Okay or a life path, a journey that we are to be on. And they chose their parents to be on this journey. Right. But the biggest thing I want to say, and, and this is, it's going to take us in a whole new direction. The biggest thing we would like to say today is that we will not make you stay here if you do not choose to be here. If anybody wants to come back home, they can find a multitude of ways to come back home whether it be by using alcohol or drugs or any other method to either slowly or quickly uh, demise the physical being, we will allow you to come back home if this, this incarnation is too heavy for you. Having said that, we always say, you are here by choice, not by force. We do not force anyone to come down and live in this existence. We understand how trying this existence can be at times. Mm -hmm. It is never our objective to have any human or spirit suffer on this realm or plane. 
We are always there at your behest trying to help. Now the younger generation feels a tremendous amount of pressure, but they came in to experience that. And they want to escape sometimes. And that is where some of these bad habits come in. And some of this, um, uh, what, what you call recreational activities start to happen. Now, if they came in knowing there was love, they were love, and that's all they had to be, and there was nothing else to worry about, maybe some of they would still love themselves completely, and they would not be trying to exit slowly or quickly from this plane. As you look at people today, mm -hmm. and you see their uh, these younger generation, and especially the ones with the recreational activities, mm -hmm. they, it's not that others do not love them, it's that they have lost the love for themselves and they don't understand at their core who they truly are. Oh, that makes so much sense. And they, more importantly, have been told, in most cases, erroneous facts about who they are or who they're supposed to be or what they're supposed to do instead of allowing their energy to flow in the direction that it is supposed to go. That was excellent. So just to clarify, I'm a channel and I was channeling. So when they say we, they're talking about the angels, guides, so on and so forth. And you'll see when I'm channeling, the appearance sometimes changes along with the dialect and the voice. So if I channel an answer, that's what's going on. So, and you did on that one. I did, absolutely. <laughs> I am not that profound. I wish I was. Yes. You are. You know, when people pass over, is there different dimensions that you go through? Absolutely. So when you first pass through, um, there's, there's what we call a tunnel <clears throat> that you go through. And as you go through this tunnel, and I know this from my personal experience of um, my, my NDEs or near-death experiences, when you start to go through the tunnel, what it is like. Um, so one of the things that I, I experienced and that I know is true from everything I've heard from people who have gone through the tunnel is when you first start to go through the tunnel, you will see the faces or those that you love, okay? as you go up the tunnel. Now this tunnel, once you leave your body, first of all, there's just this feeling of pure love. You go back to that love. Everything's okay. You have a universal understanding that everything is exactly as it's supposed to be. Everyone is exactly who they're supposed to be to help others understand self-love better. Okay. So when you pass over, your friends or family members that have hit, passed over are there? That are The first part of the tunnel are those that are still here on this plane, that are still alive in their physical body. So when I started to go through the tunnel, I saw my siblings and okay. my mom who are still here. Okay. And then you, the next part would be those who have passed over. And they're waiting for you. And yeah, and as you go through the tunnel, it gets faster and faster. Okay. Now, I did not get very far in the tunnel. I chose to come back from my <laughs> chose. I say I chose, but if I could choose it, it probably wasn't my final exit point, and I would have been booted back. It's my back. final answer. <laughs> it, was not, it wasn't my final train stop. Um, I would have been booted back anyway. Um, but I chose prior to going any further for my dogs to come back. Um, and so right there, we have free will. When we want to be here, we can be here. We can continue. And that's it. See, now that doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. We have free will. People that are past, past like I volunteer at this hospice, so they died. They didn't want to die. Well, apparently if they're in hospice, they were ready to go. Because it's some people, how do some people... Let's let's do this. I know. There's a guy in there. He couldn't. He went. He walked into the hospice himself. He walked in last month. Yeah. Because nobody would see him 
doctors, and now he's in this hospice because now he wants to die. Yeah. Now all the hospitals are calling, you know, no, you can't, you know, and he's like, I'm ready. I'm ready. I want to go. Yeah. So, and th this is a point I want to make. When people are ready to go, they should be able to go. And when people are sick, if they don't want to remain in a sick state, it is almost inhumane to force somebody mm -hmm. to be ill and remain. We wouldn't do it to our pets. I know, but that's why I wanted to know about the different dimensions. Okay. Because yes, thank you. a long time ago, I heard, like, if you commit suicide, then you're going to be in no. what's called pur purgatory, and you no. get all these little... Go. See, that's so, what it, a lot of people are confused about that. That is to dissuade that. people from committing suicide. Oh, really? Because a lot of people would exit that way. Mm -hmm. it, remember, the Bible is written by man, channeled partially, but it 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 has been... All of the books have been okay. paraphrased. Right. Let's mm -hmm. put it that way. When you go through where you um, where you come in, mm -hmm. where you come in on the other side is first. There's like a reboot or a healing, and then from there you are helping your loved ones. Once you get back home, your goal, my understanding from all of the loved ones that I've talked to on the other side, your goal is to help heal any hurt or damage you have caused to anyone on this plane, anyone you've left behind, your goal is to get them the messages, the love, the healing that they need. Not only that you have caused, but just in general, any hurt or pain wow. that they have, you want to help them. Because from this vantage point, you can see the whole plan and mm -hmm. how it's supposed to be, and you finally, you're like, oh my gosh, I get it. I want to help you get it too. So that's what their goal is. Now I will tell you, as they are on the other side, at first, their frequency or their energy might be close to you and you can feel it more. But the longer they're on the other side, like the higher... They in, get closer to God. Right. Is that they what you go, mean, higher? Yes. And the higher dimensions that they go into, meaning the more they heal also and the more work they can do for us down here. So that's how they heal is to clear any, uh, what, karma or something in this life? They get yes. higher up? Yes. Now, you call it karma. I don't. I don't believe in karma. I don't have to. Yeah. It's, it, it's just a convenient word that everybody understands. So what I'm going to say is, once they're, they're here, they, once they go to the other side and they help heal, hurt, pain, suffering, and try to teach other people. That they created. It's all about love. Yes. And not only that they created, but just in general. Okay. Any pain in general, if they cared about you here, they're going to care about you there. And they're going to try to help you understand things better. Okay. Okay? Now... Once they do that, their frequency or their spirit will go higher. Now, we all go back to our soul group. It's the group of souls that we incarnate with, whether it be just in this life or in other lives or on other dimensions, as you might say. Now, there's a theory of past lives being sequential, but now, and this is mind-blowing. I love it. What if they're all happening at the same time? And when we astro travel, now I've astro traveled in you my have? dreams. Oh, yes, so awesome. I've astro traveled in my dreams where I've gone and I've seen who I thought it was me at the time, but mm -hmm. now knowing the dimensions were all happening at the same time, we have like 10, let's just say 10 other us, uses out there living a life that's different than the one we're living in different time frames and different experiences, I may have gone and visited. In one life, I'm a kick-ass spy. How cool is that? And when I woke up, I was like, she is bad, bad butt. <laughs> she is bad butt. Wow. I wish I had a little bit of that, <laughs> but I don't. I love who I am. But yes, that is, so there are other dimensions that we can go into. So having said that, okay, I that was say, interesting. I just thought there was different levels. 
but they're not. They're just different dimensions. Right. They call them dimensions. You can call them levels. Now, really quick, because I know we're nearing the end of this very provocative, amazing session. Um, as you go out, so shall you come in means that wherever you are spiritually, uh, emotionally, mentally, when you leave, mm -hmm. you can enter back in that way. So somebody asked me once, why are babies born addicted? I said, well, maybe they went out addicted and they're coming back in to overcome that addiction. Perhaps. I'm not stating that as a fact, right, but right, I am right. saying- It's a thought. I heard, as you go out, so shall you come in. So you pick up where you left off, so to say. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. So it's my goal, not only for me, but for anybody who comes to me to evolve to the highest possible level I can to be that love and to have understanding for everything that happens. And in doing that, I think, first of all, you can live more peacefully. Oh, absolutely. And second, mm -hmm. you can be in a place where you are more gracious to those that we're sharing this planet with. So, Nancy, thank you so, so Thanks, much for Tony, being was a great. guest today. This was the most amazing, was fun. amazing Thanks. show I think I've done so well, far. Well, that's why it's so fun to ask you questions because you know these things. Absolutely. So thank you. You are welcome. And I want to thank you for joining us. I hope that this was enlightening for you also. Uh, my name is Tony Green. I am a psychic medium and, as you saw today, a channel. I look forward to, to uh, you joining me on the next episode of Psychic Medium Tony G.